Ladies and gents, what is going on with you? BQ here. Thanks for swinging by the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. If you are a first timer, please hit the subscribe button. We do our absolute very best here to cover Impact Wrestling in the most positive and fair light possible. Usually I'm the one conducting the interviews around here, but this time around, Adam has about a 19 minute interview with KM. Really good little interview talking about Impact Wrestling and how it all came about. So without further ado, here is the interview. Hello and welcome back to another Impact Lounge uh, podcast. Uh, tonight, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by KM from the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, good evening, KM. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. That's no problem at all. I, I said good evening. What time's it over there, I should ask, I suppose? Uh, it's uh, 12.45 in the afternoon. And uh, where's it your base? Are you in Florida yourself or somewhere closer to one of the uh, taping venues? No, I live in New Jersey. I live in New Jersey, right, right, right outside of New York. I'm about 30 minutes away from uh, Brooklyn. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, so thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us. Um, yeah, we talked to you on the teleconference a couple of weeks ago, and uh, obviously you gave some some fantastic answers to uh, to the assorted media on there. But we really wanted to just uh, to dive into your time with Impact a little bit further and. Uh, I suppose the uh, you know, best place to start is at the beginning. How, how did you get into uh, TNA at the time or Impact Wrestling? Uh, who made the call? What was the process? It was literally it was literally Jeff Jarrett that made the call. He called me. He called me on a Tuesday to bring me in uh, for the tapings on that Thursday. I was I was notified 48, 48 hours beforehand that I was being brought in. How did that conversation go, if you don't mind me asking? I mean, did they say we've got these plans for you or did it was just come along and we'll tell you what we got lined up? Um, what's we call it? Well, I worked for him. He was running uh, Global Force Wrestling shows on the on the independent scene. Like, he's running his own independent Global Force shows and I was doing a bunch of those. And he um, he said, uh, sorry, someone just messaged me. He gave me a call when he got brought back in there, he was in there for maybe two weeks, three weeks or something, or maybe less. And then he gave me a call on a Tuesday. There was no conversation about me coming in at all zero beforehand. I mean, I just was doing his shows and then he got brought in there. And then I, I, I was following the internet. I saw that he was in there and I, I didn't, I didn't reach out to him or anything like that. And I was like, ah, if he, if he wants me, he'll call me. And, and yeah, that's what happened on Tuesday. He's like, Hey, can you come in for Saturday and Sunday? I said, sure. And then he hit me back a little bit after that. He's like, actually, can you come in from Thursday to Sunday? I said, sure. And then I got my flight within like 20 minutes later. And yep, I've been there. And then I signed my contract that Sunday. So it all literally fell out of the sky. Like, so, yep, that's how that happened for me. And I, I got and the I, call, the big call. And at that point, were you really bothered about what you were going to be doing on the show or were you just happy just to be there? Um, no, I knew that he had plans. Um, um, I knew, I knew he had plans for me. So I, I got a, I mean, I was get, kind of got a loose outline of what I was going to do. I didn't know to what extent or whatnot. Um, I didn't know I was going to debut in the ring, like, you know, against Karen Jarrett and uh which was pretty cool a good way to debut uh so I didn't know that I mean they filled me in on the blanks when I got there they didn't I didn't have no like creative like you know phone conversation where they're going, walking me through everything so again and they this was all last second so they were shuffling things around and whatnot I know with Mike Bennett leaving uh that opened up a spot which is where they needed me to come in to uh finish off the Braxton Alley uh Laurel uh, wedding thing so yep and then when they said hey let's we need somebody to come in and he said all right let's uh you know i have this guy he said uh i forget how he worried he said uh i think he told maybe dutch he said he's like trust me you're gonna hate this guy when you see him you're gonna just look at his face and just want to punch him right in his face <laughs> <laughs> And, and what was it like backstage? I mean, did, did you have many buddies there? You know, was, from the independent scenes, did you do you know all the guys, or were you just someone coming in? Uh, only met some of the global force, I'm guessing, before some of those guys. But were, were there any mates backstage as such? Did I did I already know a lot of the talent back there? Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I I don't know if I didn't know anyone back there. Um, uh, I don't know people that I've never met before before that point. Uh, maybe maybe like yeah. I'm trying to think. Bobby Lashley, maybe I never met before that, and but I don't know. I, I maybe Trevor Lee, and maybe two, one or maybe one of the girls, or I don't know. I mean, but what I'm getting at is, yeah, I, I already knew of or knew personally the majority of the roster, so it's not like you know I'm coming into you know a different territory where I was like, Oh man, the new kid in class. I, I don't know anybody here. And I mean, follow by Mario Bokura who were with me over here in Russell pro New Jersey. I, I came up with them and we all went together and I knew, but then LAX was brought in. EY, they were EYFBL in this area, uh, Ortiz and Santana. I mean, I've known them and they were brought in homicide. Obviously Loki was there. I, I and I, I've known Loki since 1997. So I've known him for 20 years. At that point. You know what I mean? Same thing with homicide. It, it was yeah, it wasn't it wasn't bad. I wasn't nervous about like oh man, I hope I'm accepted by the roster or anything like that. And so it's yeah, Excellent. I, wasn't, I wasn't worried or nervous. And with regards to that that opening kind of storyline, which which went on for quite some time, that you were the the bodyguard for Sienna or, or for one of a better phrase, were you? Did you find yourself getting frustrated with that storyline because it, it did seem to go on for a while and and it didn't seem you were being used to your maximum potential. I mean, what were those conversations like with creative? Did, were you pushing all the time or were you just happy with your place at that point? No, I never, I never really pushed for anything. I'm not a, a political kind of guy. I don't, I'm not really saying, Hey, you should do this and this and this and this and this. I mean, um, what's more quote? They have, they have smart people. I mean, even the creative team is, is keeps switching around here and there, but I mean, right now they, they kind of got a, a good creative team in place. And, uh, the, I mean, they all seem to really like me and stuff like that. I have complete faith in all of them and everything they say and do. Scott, Don Callis, Sanjay, Abyss. Uh, I mean, they're, they 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 know what they're doing. So I don't I I don't need to tell them you should do this or whatever. But now I'm at a point where uh, if if my strongest thing to me is I'm more I could talk like I I, I don't I'm not afraid to get on the mic and ramble on my ad let my add take over and just like you know go on forever and ever and ever i love it i i'm not camera shy i love doing promos and all that stuff but uh like here and there if they want me to do certain things i'll i'll say like hey can i say this can i just, i'll run by them and more times than not they're like oh that's a great idea that's a great idea so i have a good relationship with them and whatnot but i i never question for two seconds like uh oh man why am i just a manager like this sucks so uh, i was i was just happy i was like you know whatever even if one week you know i was coming out with her and interfering in her match and getting missed by uh rosemary or something like that it's still a spot on tv a lot of people some people will complain and stuff like that instead of being grateful uh, i was just grateful because any, any spot you get used on tv is still a spot you're getting used on tv and keeping you fresh week after week so yeah it was never I, i'm not that guy i'm not that guy where they say no i want you you should do this why am i not doing do it i kind of i don't know it kind of sucks those people kind of suck in my opinion <laughs> point taken all right well moving on then so with this transgression uh, transgression transition i should say into uh, this new character and it's something that on our show we've been talking about a lot you know that we thought that there was so much more that you could be giving so h how did that come about and, and how much of in this new version of you is, is you you know h how much have you been involved in in the creative direction of you know you want to do this this storyline with, with the MMA guys no that wasn't my idea uh they, they that was just uh fun out of uh the real life scenario of um me just being a diehard MMA fan and uh, just even with ATT back there, like whenever you would see me, you would find me sitting with them, you know, whether it's uh, talking to John Hartnett or King Mo or Colby Covington or even Gleason Tybow or any of these guys, Bobby Lashley, um, Dan Lambert, all these guys, um, Alex Corbs. Every time they were backstage, like, oh, I, I love talking about MMA. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, and um, that was, I mean, I'm, I'm by far – the biggest MMA fan that's in the impact locker room, probably, I mean, in, in probably the wrestling locker room in general. <laughs> I mean, I follow it so, so deep. I mean, uh, so 
yeah, I mean, they just took that and they ran with that and they said, oh, uh, this guy, you know, he's, but yeah, hey, fam, let's do something with that and do something different. It will, it will be a storyline involving me, Moose, Eddie Edwards, Lashley, it will elevate me and yada, yada, yada. So that's where that came about. It was just basically my love for MMA and they're like, yeah, we're going to do this with you. I mean, they they hit me up with it first. They're like, hey, we have this creative idea for you. What do you, you think you'll like it? What do you think of this? And I said, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, let's do it. So, you alluded yeah, to. I was, uh, I was, uh, oh, sorry. I, I was going to say you alluded to the the change in creative over time, and uh, obviously in the last set of tapings from Motawa to to the the ones in in Florida now, it seems like we've had yet another change. What? How's that affected your storyline? Without giving any spoilers away and those kind of things, but are you still on the same course that you thought you were going to be on, or are things looking different for you going forward? Um. No, I mean, I, I never, after every set of tapings, I mean, I, I never leave there saying like, oh man, I wish I did this. So why did they do this? And so like, I'm not a boo-boo face kind of guy. Uh, and like I said, the, the, I don't know what you want to call them, the powers that be or whatever, the, from creative to management to everybody, I mean, good graces with all of them. Um, so I, I mean, I like I follow that right you well and stuff like that. I have faith in them. They have faith in me. I mean, they're complimentary to the stuff that I do, any promo that I give, any in ring segment I do, matches, whatever. They're they're very supportive and complimentary, and they like my stuff. So, I mean, I just kind of go with the flow and stuff. But uh, it's like I help run out. I run. I help run the company Russell Pro over here in New Jersey. So like. I, I know what it's like to deal with a bunch of different personalities and stuff like that because we have whatever, like 50 something students under us, plus all the outside people we bring in. It, it's a lot. You have all these different personalities. Some have all these different egos, all these different this, and it, it's a lot. And I, and me personally, I get hit with it all the time where people like are pitching things or annoying or complaining about their spot on the show. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I don't like, I don't want to be that guy. I, I never wanted to be that guy. So I'm, I, I like, I mean, unless, I'm completely delusional to it. I like to believe I'm one of the easier to deal with the guys. Not saying that the rest of the locker room's uh, hard to deal with, but I think I think I'm just a very like whatever. Sure, you want me to do this? You want me to get my ass kicked? Sure. You want me to win this? Fine. You want me to get beat up by a girl? Sure. I just don't. I I really I don't want to say I don't care. I just I mean whatever. I'm a team player, company guy. <laughs> <laughs> obviously uh it's, it's working in your favor that one uh, you, you mentioned about uh the guys coming up and pitching to you and uh in, in your own promotion there what, what, what's the worst idea that you've heard oh i mean i would have to sit down and, and, and oh i mean what's your call one time in our private group room i mean i remember asking the guys i said hey guys i want to come up with a secondary title like an intercontinental title or like a united states title but without using those names i want a secondary title because we just had the championship belt and tag team belt and i was like a secondary title i was like um pitch me some ideas what what comes to mind and then a brand new kid he's like what what about i have three ideas what about the hardcore championship the ultra violent championship or the extreme championship I said, please shut up and don't ever suggest anything ever again. <laughs> I said, at no point did I, I want to do any kind of hardcore division or anything like that whatsoever. And all three ideas were, you know, <laughs> trash bag wrestling titles. Like, get out of here. So, let, let me have a guess. I mean, you had a lot of Yeah, it's stuff like that that you just, like, slap your forehead and bang your head against the wall. And you're like, oh, my God, just shut up. Like, why did I even ask kind of deal? But, I mean, it's not – I mean, again, it's different mindsets people just breaking in they still have that you know i always like to use a comparison uh what side of the guardrail you're on they're still on you know the fanboy side of the guardrail not saying wrestlers aren't fans themselves but their mindset over time the longer you're involved in it your mindset slowly will start switching over you'll start speaking a different way looking at things a different way hopefully i mean there's still people that are like 10 years in that's like dude why are you involved in this wrestling business like you should be buying tickets still. <laughs> like you, you did not, should not be in a locker room. You know, when you're involved in wrestling in ten years and you're starting to like, you know, mark out at people in the locker room, saying, "Hey, can I take a picture with you?" and stuff like that. It's like that. It's kind of embarrassing, I think. But uh, so have you done whatever. it? <laughs> no, I don't do that. No, no, and I'm very, I'm I, very, I'm very adamant on uh, to the students. Also, I said, "Hey guys, if we're bringing in like Bret Hart to the show." Uh, He's doing an autograph signing beforehand. I said when he comes to the locker room, 
he's not supposed to line up and take pitches with the whole line. Like that's, you got to keep it professional. Like you got to check your inner fanboy on that kind of stuff. I always think so, but see so, your own. So you're trying to tell me that uh, if uh, Randy Savage or the ultimate warrior was still around, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be asking for a photo. Well, we, at our shows, we, we brought, we bring in everybody. We brought in <laughs> Bret Hart, Ric Flair. I mean, brought in the who's who of the wrestling business. I mean, and I, Brad Hart's the one who inspired me to become a professional wrestler. And if there's one person that wants a, Bre- a photo with Brad Hart, it's me. But like all three or four times we've had him, I was like, like I always kind of check my inner fanboy on that. But I mean, I think the next time though, I'm going to go against my rule of thumb on that one and be like, screw this, whatever. I'm getting one just, you know, because. <laughs> well, I appreciate, you know, we've, we're running out of time, but I've just got a couple more questions. I mean, you mentioned about uh, you're, you, you're the easy guy to work with in the locker room. And, and obviously at, at the moment, you're uh, you're getting quite a, a bit of a push uh, towards the main event and those kind of things. Do you think at some point, if you, you want to get that top title, then you're going to have to maybe be a bit more of that guy that you don't like? Or, or do you think you're just happy being on the card? Is that not the aim for you? What you talk about, like a backstage uh, politicker, and yeah, not so much that, but like obviously that. you're saying you're quite happy, you know, being the guy who you know who's taking you know the mist off Rosemary and losing and not in a comedy match, those kind of things. But you've become more serious in your character. Do you think at some point there's going to have to be where a bit where you do push back and you're not that team player just to get to the title, or do you, do you actually think that 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 will never be you? Well, I, I don't know. I kind of, I mean, whatever, whatever ideas that they have for me, I just try to take whatever they want to do and, and uh, make it my own and make it good and make it great and do the best I can with it. And uh, if, if, if creative idea is, Hey, we want to get serious with this. We want to really, you know, push you to the top of the heap and we want this and this and this. And I was like, let's rock and roll. Let's do it. I mean, I'm not that guy that's going to go up to them and say, Hey, you should do this and this and this and this and this and this because, like I said, I hate when people do it to me on a small level. But it's it's yeah, I'm not. I, I I don't know if if the time comes and whatever they need me to be, and I don't want to sound like a company kiss ass, but it, like then then I'll take whatever idea they have and I'll and I'll, I'll bet a home run with it. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go up to them and behind closed doors and be like, dude, you should you should get rid of this guy and put me in that spot and do this. Uh, like that sucks. Those people suck. <laughs> well fair enough well i've got one final question for you km if you don't mind uh, to indulge me and it's it's a bit of a fantasy wrestling for yourself and uh, i don't know if it's someone on the roster or someone who, who's in another organization but if you could be uh, headlining bound for glory for the title against anyone who would you be looking at is it, is it someone on the roster or someone off the roster kenny omega so all right okay so you'd like to get kenny would that be over in the impact zone, or would you like to do that in their Tokyo Dome? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I could pull out uh, the caliber of a match in the Tokyo Dome that uh, Omega's used to, you know. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it on my home turf. Down in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, I already did in New Jersey. We, I, I worked with Kenny already over here. Uh, and doing it for Impact would be cool. Brilliant. Well, uh, Ken, thanks for your time tonight. It's really been appreciative that you're taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us and really looking forward to seeing what's coming up in these uh, next tapings and, and looking forward to big things from you. It's uh, been a real pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me.